<clears throat> Hello, guys. Nice to see you. Good afternoon. Hi. How are you? Okay. That's thanks. I'm doing well. How are you guys? Good. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, during, during our last um, discussion on Friday, we um, <clears throat> finished with the consideration of linear uh, momentum and conservation of linear momentum with discussing this uh, rocket propulsion uh, motion uh, concept. And uh, today we proceed uh, with a new topic, which is uh, rotation of rigid. Uh, bodies. Uh, so rigid means that um, the distance between points of this body doesn't change um, during the rotation. So uh, all distances remain the same. Means that if um, uh, one point rotates about some axis of uh, rotation, of this body with certain uh, parameter, which is angular um, velocity, for instance, means that all other points of this body will rotate about this axis of rotation with the same angular velocity. So that stands uh, behind this term uh, rigid body. Uh, so today we will introduce uh, main parameters which um, describe, <clears throat> which can quantify the rotational motion uh, in uh, analogy with uh, uh, translational motion. We will also write down set of kinematic equations for rotational motion and uh, proceed uh, further with, um, with other uh, discussion of kinetic energy of rotational motion and um, introduction of the concept of uh, moment of inertia. Uh, here was some question. Okay, so there's a question about the units in the uh, answer to homework problem. Uh, it's necessary to see the problem, first of all, in which units there was uh, given the task. So um, when you have some concerns about uh, problems, uh, don't just write emails um, on this problem, which some specific question, uh, but also make a screenshot of the problem uh, where it's shown your answer and long kappa's answer. Uh, and uh, then we can proceed further with the um, consideration of these cases, because we need to see the problem. For instance, I don't know those home homework problems. Uh, I need to see them. I haven't seen them because other instructors are responsible for this, uh, but eventually we will, uh, all these uh, issues which are with homework problems, we will discuss together with all other instructors. Uh, so, yeah, if you have some concerns about the uh, problems, please make the screen screenshot. Uh, also, if like with solution that you believe that your solution is correct, of course, please double check it uh, from your uh, side uh, carefully. Uh, and then if you have some concerns with the solution, also send it uh, with your step-by-step -step solution written in the player form. Okay, uh, then let us transfer to this slides where we can write. <clears throat> so, 
So, um, let's say we have some arbitrary shape body. We have some axis of rotation uh, O. Then we have some point P. So the distance from this axis of rotation to the point will be R, some radius. And uh, if it moves, uh, like rotates about this um, axis uh, O uh, by some angle theta, write it here, theta, uh, then the path which this point will make, let's mark it S, uh, will be equal to uh, radius times theta. So if theta we measure in radians. So uh, that's actually the definition of angle uh, like of in radians, um, it's the ratio between the length of the segment of a circle to the radius. And if, for instance, we have a whole circle, uh, then uh, uh, it will be two pi times r. It's the length of the circle divided by r. So we cancel out and then we will end up with two pi radian. So two pi uh, radian stands for whole circle uh, or uh, 360 degrees, in other words. So obviously, um, if we compare with um, translational motion, uh, where position is uh, x, consider motion along x is x. Uh, then here in uh, rotational motion, we have instead of x this theta, it defined how much it rotates with, from initial uh, uh, position. So <clears throat> uh, obviously we need to have other kinematic, uh, some kinematic parameters, and uh, it is convenient to introduce uh, angular velocity. We discussed this already previously, shortly, uh, but uh, here it's the uh, thing because we need to um, deal with uh, some parameter which uniformly describes the um, rotation of whole body as one, as unity. Um, because we can, of course, uh, draw here some uh, linear velocity vector. But the problem is that for each point of this body, it will be uh, different in direction and in magnitude, because it will uh, be oriented in um, different directions, plus there will be different distance from this each point of this body to the axis of rotation. Uh, and uh, uh, that will result in different magnitudes. So it will be very difficult, uh, both in terms of magnitude and in terms of direction, uh, to describe rotational motion, because then you will need to deal with uh, very many points of uh, and very many linear um, velocity vectors. So in order to avoid this, uh, there is introduced concept of angular velocity vector. So it's also vector uh, parameter and uh, that, uh, that its direction is defined uh, by uh, clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. So it's always directed along axis uh, of rotation. And uh, in, for instance, in this uh, case, if we have um, rotation, uh, counterclockwise in this x, y plane. So this is x, y plane. 
um, then uh, angular velocity vector will be pointed um, upwards, like towards us from the uh, uh, plane of this image uh, along uh, axis of rotation. So it will go from through this point O. And uh, if we change the direction of rotation, so if we, for instance, go uh, clockwise, uh, then according to this rule of the right the thread screw, um, it will uh, be the angular uh, velocity vector uh, will be uh, pointed downwards, like will go from us towards the plane of the uh, image. So it will mark it as this. Uh, so that in terms of, so this angular velocity vector defines uh, rotational motion uh, for whole body at, at once. So we don't need to uh, specify different vectors for different points because all points will rotate with the same angular velocity and direction of this rotation will be defined on uh, by orientation of the angular velocity vector, either uh, uh, for clockwise or counterclockwise uh, direction. Uh, there are only two options for rotation about an axis. So with this, we can introduce some uh, average angular velocity, uh, which will be uh, in analogy to our average velocity, uh, like linear velocity, uh, uh, final theta minus initial theta means final position minus initial position coordinate. Uh, here we have final time minus initial time. So eventually we get delta theta over delta t. So it actually shows us how uh, best um, uh, in radians per second. So units of angular velocity is radian per second. Uh, this uh, body is rotating about certain axis. <clears throat> so uh, obviously we don't limit our interest only with um, average uh, angular velocity. Velocity, we need to know also instantaneous parameters. So we go for angular uh, velocity instantaneous as limit delta t approaches to zero. And uh, uh, here of delta theta over delta t. And that is first derivative of um, angle uh, theta over time, d theta over dt. Uh, <clears throat> the same also stands for um, angular acceleration. So there is also this parameter, angular acceleration instantaneous value will be limit delta t approaches to zero. And here it will be um, d delta omega over delta t. E. Uh, which is, so it shows how, how fast uh, angular acceleration changes uh, with time. Uh, that will be first derivative of angular acceleration, uh, sorry, angular um, velocity, uh, d omega over dt, and uh, also can be defined as second derivative of angle theta over time. So you can see already uh, some uh, similarities um, between translational and uh, rotational motion. Uh, by the way, um, the direction of this angular acceleration vector will be also along axis uh, of rotation, and uh, it will coincide with the rotation of angular velocity vector if angular velocity is increasing um, and will be in op pointed uh, in opposite direction if angular velocity uh, decreases. So um, 
in analogy to translational motion, we can also write here a set of kinematic equations, which will describe uh, this common uh, case of um, rotational motion with constant angular acceleration. So we remember that we had this set of uh, Uh, we uh, have a set of uh, equation, kinematic equations for translational motion. So similar, uh, we can write uh, here for uh, rotational motion. So final angular accelerator, x angular velocity will be equal to initial angular velocity plus angular accelerations times t. E. Then final theta will be equal to initial angle r plus omega initial times t uh, plus component originated from the uh, contribution of uh, angular acceleration a t squared divided by t. Uh, again, if we express time from first equation substituted in second equation, we can um, write uh, another form of kinematic equation, which doesn't include time. So uh, final uh, angular uh, velocity will be equal to initial, oops, sorry, uh, initial angular velocity square uh, plus two times angular acceleration uh, times difference in uh, angles. Uh, theta uh, final minus theta initial. So that is all. Uh, you can see that the structure is the same as equations for kinematic equations for um, translational motion. We just operate with different terms. Uh, uh, theta, omega, uh, like uh, angle, uh, angular uh, velocity and angular acceleration instead of uh, position x, linear velocity and linear acceleration. But other from that, the concept is quite uh, similar. Uh, <clears throat> so now we can proceed with the definition of kinetic energy of rotational motion. So, um, uh, so far, we were considering uh, kinetic energy of translational motion. And as we remember, that was kinetic energy is equal to um, m times v squared divided by 2. So with this, everything is clear. However, uh, rotational motion is a bit different. So uh, as total if we consider some disk, for instance, which rotates about uh, its uh, central point, uh, like axis, uh, which goes through the central uh, center of this disk. Uh, so technically, whole body does not move in space because it stays in the same um, location. Uh, however, obviously, this body possesses some kinetic energy. And that is because of rotational motion of this body. Uh, so the thing is that each small um, part of this body uh, moves in space. It has it's moving along some uh, circular trajectory, uh, and uh, it has some um, linear velocity vector. So uh, let's say if we have some random shape body. Uh, this is our axis of rotation. Um, here is our angular velocity vector orientation. This is our radius to certain uh, small um, part of this body, uh, which we consider. And this small part has mass mi. This is radius ri, which defines the distance from the um, 
axis of rotation to this small uh, part of the body, which we consider. Uh, so it moves when it rotates, it moves with some circular trajectory. Uh, and uh, here we have this linear velocity vector of this small part of the body, Vi. Um, obviously, now we can say, okay, it moves, it has some linear velocity vector. So kinetic energy of this small part of the uh, rigid body will be equal to uh, one half mi times v uh, i squared. So everything similar to previous discussions when we considered some uh, translational motion, kinetic energy of translational motion. So let us uh, write now uh, total kinetic energy. Uh, if we want to know total kinetic energy of this body rotating about this given axis, uh, then it will be sum of Ki for all small, small parts of this body. And uh, that will be uh, sum over i, one half mi times vi squared. So here we need to uh, think a bit because uh, would this velocity be the same for every point, every small part of the body, or it will be different? Any ideas? I guess different. Equal. Same yeah. in magnitude, and but different in direction. So let's let's take a look here on this uh, image. Uh, so this is a linear velocity vector of this given point M I. Uh, we know that this rigid body is rotating about axis, uh, which is shown with this arrow, uh, with constant angular velocity. Since this is a rigid body, it means that every point of this body um, moves with the same angular velocity, omega. So now let us consider some point uh, here. And it will move with such, like along such circular trajectory. And this will be some other radius. So R is smaller than R I. And we know that linear velocity is radius times angular um, velocity. So if our radius decreases, and angular velocity is constant, means that velocity will also decrease. So uh, means we will have uh, different magnitudes of linear velocity for different points of this body. Why? Because they are located at different distances from the uh, axis of rotation. And uh, since they rotate all with constant uh, angular um, uh, velocity, uh, distance are different, then means that magnitudes of the linear velocities will be different. So taking this into account, we need to address different linear velocity for each point here. And in order to do this, obviously, we want to use angular acceleration, which is the same for all points. That is convenient. Uh, then we will have sum for all uh, points. Uh, we can put this one half in front of the sum. And here will be mi times r i square times omega square. So now we see here 
this omega is the same for all points, so we don't put i uh, next to it. Uh, we see here this sum of a product uh, mi times ri squared. So this is uh, actually a new parameter, which we introduce here is uh, a moment of inertia, i, and uh, it is very important parameter for rotational motion since uh, it's equivalent of mass in uh, translational motion. So now we can write that uh, kinetic total kinetic energy of this um, motion, uh, rotational motion will be equal to one half times i, sorry, times i uh, times omega squared. So we can see the similarities between these two equations. They have the same uh, structure, but operate with different parameters. If in translational motion, we operate with the um, mass and linear velocity vector, uh, so just linear velocity magnitude. Uh, here we operate with, uh, instead of mass, with a moment of inertia and uh, angular uh, velocity. Uh, what is important that ang uh, moment of inertia can be uh, calculated only with respect to a given axis of rotation. So the same body um, with respect to different uh, axis of rotation uh, will have different moment of inertia. Uh, it's not like mass is constant, just defines properties of the um, body. So for instance, if we put axis of rotation uh, here, so that will be our axis of rotation, um, then uh, moment of inertia with respect to this new axis of rotation will be different. And that we will uh, show a bit uh, later in details when we consider some examples. Uh, so units for this moment of inertia, as we introduce a new parameter here, will be, we can see it from already from here, it's kilograms times meter squared. And uh, another thing what we need to consider before we proceed with some examples, mm, let's assume that we have uh, some body, some rigid body at certain height. So it already possess some kinetic um, energy, uh, sorry, uh, at certain height. So it has already some potential energy. Then it, uh, Perform some translational motion. So it has component of kinetic energy responsible for uh, translational motion. That's what we were writing before. So total mechanical energy is uh, mg times h, stands for potential energy plus um, mv squared divided by two stands for kinetic energy origin like associated with translational motion. And in this case, we have an additional new form of uh, motion, uh, which is rotational motion. So we also need to take into account this additional kinetic energy which this rigid body may possess if it performs uh, translational motion, uh, sorry, rotational motion that will be i times omega squared divided by two. And obviously we need to know uh, about which uh, axis this rotation is happening because uh, with respect to that specific um, axis, we need to calculate the um, moment of inertia. It's not some constant parameter. Okay, so with this, I think we can uh, proceed to some uh, examples when we uh, calculate different uh, moment of inertia of different systems. So <clears throat> first let us consider some system of uh, four bodies. Let's have some axis X and Y. 
y. Along axis y, we have two masses, two bodies with m masses m. Along axis x, two with capital M. So here we have uh, distance A, here distance A from the origin of the coordinates, here distance B and here distance B. So we assume that size of these bodies is much smaller than the distance of these bodies to the center of uh, coordinates. And now there are different options. We can rotate this system of four bodies about axis Y, about axis X, and also um, about axis Z, which goes perpendicularly to this plane of the uh, image. So let's start with axis Y. Uh, moment of inertia for this axis Y. We know this general equation, sum for all masses, mi times um, all distances in square. And uh, what is important here, we mentioned that uh, we neglect with the size of these bodies, so they are considered as mathematical points. So we only consider with their location, uh, not their uh, size. Uh, so in this case, when we rotate this system about axis Y, uh, since these two masses are located on axis Y, the distance from axis of rotation to these masses will be equal to zero. So that's why they do not contribute to their uh, moment of inertia of this system uh, when it rotates about axis Y. Only uh, these masses located on axis X will contribute. So we have um, M times A square for first body plus M times A square for second body. So it will be two M A square. Uh, this is the moment of inertia of this system of four bodies with respect to axis um, Y. So if we want to calculate kinetic energy, uh, assuming that this system will rotate with some constant um, angular um, velocity omega, so kinetic energy will be one half uh, I Y mul multiply omega square. And uh, uh, instead of this uh, moment of inertia, we can now substitute this equation. So it will be uh, one half two m a square multiply m a square so two and two we cancel out will be uh, m a square times m a square. So this is kinetic energy for. Um, when we rotate about axis one. Uh, if we consider axis X, for instance, that will be exactly the same, but instead of considering these um, masses um, along axis X, we will consider masses along axis Y because uh, distance from masses which are located on axis X to rotation, uh, axis of rotation, if it's axis x, I will be equal to zero. Uh, so in this case, uh, moment of inertia with respect to axis x for this system will be two m times uh, b square. Uh, however, it will be necessary to take into account contribution of all uh, bodies. Uh, into the moment of inertia when we calculate it with respect to axis Z. So in this case, moment of inertia with respect to uh, Z will be, uh, axis Z uh, will be equal to uh, M A square plus M capital A square plus M B square plus M B square. So you see that um, for all 
three axis of rotation, we get different values for moment of inertia. And that means that we cannot calculate moment of inertia is if we don't know the position of this um, axis of rotation. That is very important. <clears throat> uh, obviously, we also need to deal with some uh, continuous uh, bodies, uh, not only with system of many bodies. And in that case, we need um, to define a uh, moment of inertia as a limit when this small element of the body, uh, its mass approaches to uh, zero of this sum R i squared times delta m i. Uh, and that is uh, the integral R squared times d m uh, over the whole body whatever it is. So whatever it is means it could be uh, some three-dimensional body, then this small element dm is defined as rho density uh, times dv, some small volume, uh, could be two-dimensional. Then dm is defined as sigma, which is surface density, times dA, uh, elementary area of this surface, uh, or mm, one dimensional case, then dm is equal to linear density times dl. Uh, so taking this into account, let us consider uh, some examples of calculating moment of inertia for continuous bodies. So first we consider axis x and y. And here we have some rho. Uh, so total lens is L. Uh, here is minus L divided by two. Here, coordinate of the other edge of this rho will be L divided by two. Uh, we consider constant linear density. Uh, which could be uh, defined as total mass of this rod divided by its length. Uh, so in this case, uh, dm is equal to lambda times dx, and uh, it is equal to m over l times dx. So let us calculate moment of inertia. Uh, of this uh, rod with respect to axis y. So i with respect to uh, axis y is equal. Uh, we have this general equation r squared times dm integral uh, equal to integral uh, x square times m over l dx. And here we can put already ranges. So it will be from minus l over two to plus l over two. So these guys m and l are constants. We take them out from integral mass over our length times integral from minus l over two, two L over two, uh, X squared DX. So this is a simple integral. So we will get M divided by L, X cube divided by three. And here it will be uh, minus, like from minus L divided by two, two, L divided by two. So if we substitute these uh, ranges, it will be uh, M over three L, uh, L cube over eight minus 
and here will be one more minus um, L cube over eight. So this is not from here. So with this, we finally get the uh, expression for the moment of inertia it will be uh, L over four. So we cancel out this uh, and L in the cube here. So here we will have square and uh, it will be M times L second power uh, divided by 12. So this is the um, moment of um, inertia uh, of this uh, road with uniform uh, density distribution um, with respect to axis uh, Y, uh, taking into account its position in the, where, when the center of this uh, system of coordinates is located uh, in the center of this uh, road. Uh, <clears throat> so we have still some time. Let us consider one more um, example when we have a cylinder. So let's say this is axis Z. Here is our cylinder. We consider that the height of this cylinder is L. Uh, its radius is R. And uh, uh, it has uniform density. Constant. So uh, dm is expressed as rho times dv. And uh, we need to define this uh, dv. So in order to make it easy for us, uh, in order to integrate only uh, in one direction, uh, instead of integrate, instead of using, for general case, you would apply here uh, this um, polar system of coordinates. But we can avoid that by considering certain uh, shape of this volume dv. So if we consider two circles here, one very close to another, so the radius here will be r to the first, and the distance between the first and the second will be dr. So if we consider such elementary volume along all our cylinder, uh, this volume can be written as follows. dv is equal to the um, area between these two circles. That will be 2 pi r length of the circle times distance between circles dr and times the uh, height of the cylinder times l. So that will be our volume. So we can have rho times 2 pi r times l times dr. Uh, OK, so that is given. And now we can integrate only along this radius r from 0 to r capital, which is the radius of our um, cylinder. So moment of inertia with respect to axis z uh, will be equal, so general equation r squared times dm. Uh, it will be equal, we substitute dm as a function of radius. Uh, so it will be uh, integral r squared times rho times l times 2 pi r times dr. So these guys are constant 
So we can take them out from the integral. It will be two pi rho times L integral. So here we already can put the ranges from zero to R, from zero to R. Uh, here R cube dr. So when we integrate this, two pi rho times L, R cube, uh, sorry, not cube already, but in fourth power divided by four from zero to R capital. So that will be uh, two pi rho times L R in the fourth power divided by four. Uh, now we can uh, express rho in this equation and uh, rho is Let's write it here. Uh, rho is total mass divided by the volume. So it will be mass of the cylinder divided by mm, pi r squared times L. This is the volume. If we substitute it here instead of rho, we will get two pi uh, times total mass of the cylinder and over pi r square l. And here r force power times uh, divided by four. So we cancel this and this. Uh, then we cancel this. And this, uh, we forgot here L. So it should be here. So L and L we cancel. And pi and pi we cancel. So what do we have? It will be uh, M times R square divided by two. So this is our um, uh, moment of inertia with the cylinder with respect to axis uh, Z. So, excuse oh. me. Yeah. So sure. I, I didn't understand how we define the DV. How we define DV. Okay. So uh, maybe let us come here. So this is, let's consider like projection from top. So it's two dimensional case. Uh, then we consider some circle here, which is smaller than the radius of the uh, cylinder. And that will be some R, radius R. So then we kind of expand this uh, circle to a bit larger size. This will be, uh, this new radius will be R plus dr, some small change in radius. So like distance between these two initial and final uh, circles uh, will be dr. So this area between initial and final uh, circle is uh, length of the first circle. This is our first circle. And that will be two pi times radius r and then in order to get the area, we need to multiply to the thickness of this uh, be, uh, distance between the initial and final uh, circle. So that will be times dr. So it kind of, if we uh, make this uh, un 
unflip, unravel this uh, circle will be some line. And the length of this line will be two pi times r. And here is, it's another position, new position at a distance dr. So the area here will be two pi r times dr. And the volume, so if we consider now not in projection, but in three dimensional, uh, we know that this cylinder has a height of L. And then uh, this will be dA, some small surface uh, area. And uh, dV will be dA times L, uh, the height of the cylinder. So it will be two pi r times dr times uh, L. So that is how we define this unit uh, volume. So we just took the distance between the smaller and the larger circles dr? Yes. Oh, OK. Thank you. Mm -hmm. OK. Good that you asked, probably. It was also not clear for some other students. <coughs> Okay, guys, thank you very much for attention. Uh, we will meet uh, on Friday, uh, on Wednesday next time, and uh, we'll continue with uh, our discussions on uh, rotational motion uh, and other topics which follow. Uh, so uh, have a good evening. Take care and see you on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you for the lecture. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Have a good day.